Well, the year is at an end, and what a year it was. 2023 is verifiably the greatest year in gaming in nearly 20 years. More high-scoring games released this year than ever before, running the gamut of experiences, from gorgeously stylized adventures and deeply complex role-playing games, all the way to a giant robot make things go boom. Now that the year is coming to a close, it is officially time for the Hardwired 2023 Game of the Year. This is, of course, an objectively correct list of the top 10 games this year, which, no, I will not be taking any suggestions on. With so many amazing titles, only one question is left. Who will take home Game of the Year? Rounding up the top of our top 10 games is a game that takes the nuance of From Software's usual game styles in the vein of Dark Souls and mashes it up with what can only be described as Weeaboo Mode Michael Bay. Armored Core 6 fires a Rubicon, emphasizes iteration and lightning fast gameplay, dashing alongside a towering walking tank as I was heading to take it to its knees, clashing head to head with this death circle, and even diving into the multiplayer to take on some of the goofiest mechs I have ever seen. Speaking of things in the vein of Dark Souls, this year had a veritable crop of new Souls-like games, but amongst them was a new gem. Lies of P, a joyfully dark take on the story and world of Pinocchio with a story that hits more than it misses and gameplay that feels warmly familiar and yet freshly subversive. Letting players swap parts on weapons to build all new playstyles is a genius move and while the bosses aren't as memorable or eerie as those found in From Software games, Lies of P is easily the closest thing to Bloodborne 2 we are going to get anytime soon. Look, honestly, if you had told me at the start of the year that one of the best games this year would be in the genre that I kinda care the least about and that it would be centered on the story of Pinocchio, I'd have straight up called you a liar. What can I say about Diablo? I've played every iteration of this series from the original to the D2 remake, which we do not talk about, and which also made me realize that the past sucks. Diablo 4 is something different though. Despite having the monumental task of taking the series forward, Diablo 4 delivers on a gameplay loop that sinks its teeth into you. I spent hours running dungeons, growing my powers, and then seeking out new foes who could challenge that power. Is it perfect? No. Peep the $11 horse skins and the always online MMO nonsense. But it is some of the most satisfying gameplay the series has seen in a long, long time. Sea of Stars is one of those rare gems of an indie game that don't come around that often. It's like getting a warm hug from an old friend. It greets you with the familiar trappings of old school RPGs, dripping gorgeous artwork and music from start to finish with a story that sells the intricate nature of fate and destiny. Then you get to the gameplay and things get turned up to 11. It's modern. It's classic, and somehow it just works. Look, if you haven't given Sea of Stars your time yet, you should do so now. Easily number seven on our list this year, and it is for sure our indie game of the year. Continuing the trend of 2023 being the year of stellar sequels, Jedi Survivor is basically everything I wanted out of a follow-up to one of my favorite Star Wars adventures. Excellent acting, incredible gameplay that never strips powers from you, and a ton of content to explore and quite frankly, get lost in, like extremely lost. Wait, where am I? Jedi Survivor only built on the incredible lightsaber combat from the first game, putting in new challenges and the insanely fun stance system. And I don't want to spoil anything, but maybe you don't always have to use the most civilized weapon. But more importantly, it understood the assignment. Being a Jedi needed to still be cool. And it is. Here to report on what the best game to play with your dad is for this year is Kaya Jade Hamilton, our family video game reporter. Kaya? Yes, that's right. My favorite thing to play with my daddy, Pokemon. I sometimes wonder if I am controlling it, or if it's controlling me. Epic in every sense of the word. Final Fantasy 16 was a surprisingly RPG-like game. It leaned more heavily on its grandiose story and explosive combat to deliver one of my favorite entries in the series. Is it a traditional Final Fantasy game? No, it doesn't have the turn-based combat you'd expect, and we've long since departed that anyways. Do I love the Devil May Cry style combat? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. And the icon battles are some of the coolest things ever put to the medium. Final Fantasy 16 is a thrill from start to finish and rightfully earned its place in our top five. If you have watched Hardwired at all this year, then you know Alan Wake 2 is more than your average psychological horror game. Following up on the incredible control, Remedy has done what I almost thought was impossible. It followed up on a clunky 14-year-old game with possibly their best game ever. 
Alan 2 seeps eerie atmosphere. It's only enhanced by its near psychedelic visuals that combine live action and insanely detailed game graphics. Excellent voice acting. It's drenched in mystery and dread and just a little bit of goofiness. I don't want to give anything away because I want you to experience it yourself, but Alan Way 2 easily has become a genre defining game and it's one of the very best games of this year. What's better than Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Double the powers. Double the emotional stories. Double the sick air tricks. Insomniac took every single aspect of the first game and Miles Morales and improved on it in every conceivable way. This is the definitive Spider-Man game. Combat is snappy and suitably acrobatic. The cast killed every role, and its massive sprawling New York is more enjoyably detailed than ever. Watching Peter and Miles struggle with regret, grief, and acceptance was an emotional journey that I love to be a part of. Insomnia crafted a beautiful tale. Plus, if you know me, you know that a game needs three things for me to fall in love with it. Excellent combat, a photo mode, and a fun, consistently enjoyable way to get around. Introducing web wings into the already kinetic flow of the amazing web slinging system opened up some fantastically fun new ways to flow around that made the moving between missions just as addictive as the core game. Look, I'm just saying you need a good way to get around. I'm looking at you, Starfield. Marvel's Spider-Man 2 checks every box and delivers on the greatest superhero tale to date. For decades, Dungeons & Dragons has struggled to find a space in the mainstream. Poorly executed video games and movies only made the franchise feel weak and underfunded. But more crucially than all that, no one had found a great way to take the tabletop world of D&D and make it work in the video game space. That is until a little game called Divinity Original Sin. Larian Studios had not just made an excellent RPG that had its world running on the D&D formula, but a fantastically fun game for those looking for a more visually driven version of the OG. And from that experience, Larian would go on to craft the masterpiece that is Baldur's Gate 3. I have put an unbelievable amount of time into this game, building out my unique character as I seek to solve the mystery of my new brain word. Look, it's complicated. I don't want to talk about it. But every character is performed excellently. Branching paths and dialogue ensure no two games feel exactly the same and player freedom is nearly completely open. The developers truly did think of everything you might think to do. Baldur's Gate 3 is what every developer sets out to make their game accessible, engaging, and most importantly, addictively fun. Tears of the Kingdom is nothing short of a game design masterclass. From the normal gameplay perspective of Zelda, everything is here. Running and climbing, hitting stuff with a big stick, riding horses, and even the traditional dungeons. It feels all so familiar, but every single pixel of this game, you have to trust me on this, is full of new twists and turns. Subtle improvements to the movement make Link feel like he's more in control, he's more acrobatic, and he effortlessly leaps into his paraglider, handling enemies with more refined combat. It's the best he's ever been, and then you get to Ultra Hand. This tool, I cannot stress this enough, changes everything. The level of player freedom and creativity this one tool opens up is insane. It's almost like Link was given access to the Flex Seal family of products. Phil Swift himself said, do you need to beef up the damage on that sword? Put a rock on it. Ever wanted to build your own mech? Behold the Decimator. Link is unleashed with this one ability, and it's just one of the Ultra Hand abilities. My boy can bloop his way through objects using Ascend, control the very fabric of time with Recall, and even store pre-built creations in his pocket that he can just call out whenever he needs them, so long as the materials are nearby. This mechanic is the kind of thing that comes around once a generation. A revolution so ingenious it changes the landscape of gaming forever. Whether Nintendo wants to admit it or not, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is the swan song of the Nintendo Switch. A glorious homage to all of the Zelda that came before it, Nintendo put together a game that made me think, it made me explore, and get truly creative, and most impressively, it turned an entire subsection of the internet into pseudo-engineers dedicated to not helping these poor Koroks get home. It wasn't an easy decision with so many steep competitors in the race, but our game of the year for 2023 is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. From our team here at Hardwired, happy holidays and a happy new year. See you again in January for another year of video game news. For Hardwired, I'm Andrew Hamilton.